you can incubate a lot of either negative things or positive things in sleep. This is getting too easy, just sleeping sadhana. So coming awake to an alarm bell with a sudden start is not the best way to do your life. How many of you find uh, that one day morning when you get up without any reason, you're just feeling ugly for no reason? If it is happening even at least two, three times a year, if it is, then you must do certain things before you go to bed. It's very, very important. Because unconsciously, you need to understand this, you can incubate a lot of either negative things or positive things in sleep. Either pleasantness or unpleasantness, you can incubate very effectively uninterrupted in sleep. You can also incubate it in the day, but there are so many interruptions, it doesn't happen very efficiently. But if you have a tendency to go to bed in a certain way and you wake up in the morning really nasty for simply no reason, that means you're incubating things in the night very efficiently. Bad eggs. This is not just about psychological disturbances, it can cause major physiological problems over a period of time. It's, it's important that you eliminate these things from your life. So, before you go to bed in the night, there are certain things that you need to take care of. It's best if you're eating meat and other kinds of meals you eat at least three to four hours before you go to bed. The digestion is over. Before going to bed, drink a certain amount of water and go to bed. You will see it gets taken care of just like this. One simple thing can be just a shower. Always to shower before go to bed. It'll make a lot of difference. In this weather, Maybe cold showers are difficult, so you go for lukewarm showers, don't go for hot showers in the night. Go for lukewarm showers, it makes you alert. So you will think, oh, I cannot sleep. It doesn't matter, you will sleep fifteen, twenty minutes or half an hour later, but you will sleep better because it will take away certain things. When you shower, it is not just the dirt on the skin that you're taking away. Have you noticed if you're very tense and anxious, whatever, just a shower, you came out and feels like almost the burden has been taken away from you? Have you not noticed this? So it's not just about washing the skin. A whole lot of things happen when water flows over your body. This shower is a very rudimentary bhuti shuddhi because over seventy percent of your body is actually water. If you run water over it, a certain purification happens which is beyond cleaning the skin. One more thing if you want to do, you just light an organic oil lamp, a cotton wick, some oil, anything. What do you use here? Normal cooking oil, linseed oil, rice bran oil or sesame oil, what do you have? Olive oil. Olive oil, fine. Any organic oil with a cotton wick, just burn a little lamp somewhere in the room where you sleep you will see these things will completely disappear. If you can bring in a chant or there are nightly practices, yogic practices, before you go to bed, sit on your bed and do this practice. Do you know, in about… if you live for about sixty years, you are… on an average most human beings are eating anywhere between eleven hundred to fourteen hundred tons of food. So that means even what you think is my body is not this, it's changing every day. New input is happening and old things are going away. So fourteen hundred tons, you don't have to carry that much of weight right now. So obviously what you have as a body right now is just a transient amount of food and soil, isn't it? Hello? So what you think is mine also is not it, it is just all the time changing. Tonight before you go to bed, spend at least twelve, fifteen minutes 
reminding yourself, you're neither this body nor this mind. Just lie down and just remind yourself, this body is not really you. It is mine right now for use, but it's not really me. Just… if you're not able to do it, just link it to your breath. Inhalation, I'm not the body. Exhalation, I'm not even the mind. Just lie down for twelve minutes and do it, till the last moment till you fall asleep. This is something you must notice. Only few individuals in the whole history of man have been awakened. Their names can be counted on the ten fingers, not more than that. And it was natural. Man has evolved out of the animals. Animals are in a deep sleep. They don't know that they are. That is the meaning of sleep. One is, but one is not aware that one is. No animal is aware of himself. And I agree with Charles Darwin on different grounds. His grounds are ordinary, mundane, can be criticized, has been criticized. In fact, he is no more an accepted scientist about the evolution of humanity. Majority of scientists have deserted him, but I am in his support on a totally different ground. My ground is looking at man's sleep This is the only possibility that he has grown up from the animals, monkeys, chimpanzees, whatsoever, whosoever was there in the beginning. Man's sleep proves it. And only rarely, once in a while, a Gautam Buddha, a Bodhidharma, a Socrates, once in a while there has been a man who has guts to come out of his sleep. It needs tremendous courage to come out of his sleep because in his sleep we have so much invested. It is just like a man who is dreaming that he is living in a golden palace with a great kingdom, with all the luxuries, and you try to wake him up. He is just a beggar on the street. Only beggars dream of being emperors. Emperors never dream of being emperors. That will be simply illogical. The beggar has so much investment in his sleep and dream that he will resist in every possible way not to be awakened. He will get irritated, 
he will oppose you that who are you to interfere in my life can't you even tolerate a man who is having a sweet dream and even if you force him to be awakened he is going to fall asleep again because waking he is only a beggar asleep he becomes an emperor the investment in psychological sleep is tremendous that's why all those people Gautam Buddha, Bodhi Dharma, Chuang Tzu, Plotinus, Heraclitus, they all failed. They did their best. They struggled again against the sleep of men. But is still man is asleep and whatever he is doing proves that he is asleep these two world wars prove that he is asleep the coming third world war can be prevented only if we can awaken enough people so those people become infectious and go on awakening other people in a chain and it has to be done so fast because time is not much otherwise the sleepy people are going to destroy this earth this life politicians are asleep no awakened person can become a politician for the simple reason because he can not lie he cannot give you promises that he knows can never be fulfilled no awakened people will be a politician because he has no desire for his ego to be fulfilled there is no ego anymore ego exists as a substitute self in sleep the moment you are awakened ego has no function it is useless you are there now you don't need it and the man who knows himself has no inferiority complex unless you are suffering from some inferiority complex you will not be involved into any kind of leadership political religious social you don't have the base the inferiority complex is the cause of everybody becoming ambitious because if they don't become somebody in the world in their own eyes they fail they want to prove themselves that we are here that we have been here they want to be recorded their names in the history although they know that even the greatest names in history by and by 
go on slipping from the prominence, become footnotes, move into the appendix and out of the door. Initially, how many people we can go on carrying, but they want to make their name. That too proves something animal. All the animals of the world have a instinct. Scientists call it the territorial imperative. The dog pissing on the tree is simply making his signature. He is saying that this tree belongs to me. He won't allow another dog to come near, and other dogs will smell his urine and will know that this tree is not free, not available, somebody possesses it. There are animals who will go on particularly, the lion, urinating on a vast territory just so that everybody is aware men also works in the same way all these nations are nothing but people pissing and making <laughs> a boundary that this is America, this is Soviet Union, this is India. You can smell it is a different country. Don't enter without a visa, without a passport. Otherwise there is no need for any nations on the What is the need? Can't we all live as one humanity? What happens in the future is not my concern. My concern is with this moment, because the next moment may be the last moment on the earth. Remember this, that when you go to sleep, say goodbye to life with great gratitude. It has given you so much. Never forget, I don't say to you that go to sleep praying Jesus Christ on your knees or Gautam Buddha or some other guy. I say to you go to your sleep with a thankful heart for all that life has given to you, all the laughters, all the loves, all the beautiful flowers, the songs of the birds, the colourful rainbows, the amazing sunsets, sunrises. It has given you so much that if there is not going to be tomorrow, you have not missed anything. 
Let there be no tomorrow. You are already fulfilled. And if by chance you wake up again tomorrow morning, Don't start with any mantra, chanting, prayer. These are all irreligious ways. Again, start the day with gratitude love, joy. People say that you should not get out of the bed with the wrong leg, <laughs> wrong foot, because then you spoil your whole day. And as far as I know, legs have nothing to do with your day. I would like you, when you get up, get up with laughter, any leg will do. <laughs> but to go to your bathroom dancing. <laughs>